Hey folks, Dan Furrier here with your market update for April 25th, 2024. It's going to be a bad day. I'm going to start the conversation by that. If you haven't seen the Dow Jones yet or interest rates, they're skyrocketing. Interest rates are skyrocketing and the Dow Jones and the financial markets are plummeting. Why? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. So I don't come on this channel every day to kind of cherry pick data that makes everything look peachy. I don't come into the every day and try to fear monger you guys to say the world's ending. You guys, they got to click this and make sure that I can explain to you why the world's ending. My job is just to give you the facts. So if you're out there, if you're looking to buy a real estate in 2024, you need to know the facts. Um, who I am, my name is Dan Friel. I'm a mortgage advisor. I'll say this, I'm, I'm a loan officer, licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico. I'd love to help you. I'll give you all my information at the end of this video. But without further ado, let's get to today's calendar so I can explain what the heck's going on. So we see mortgage rates right through here. They, they basically didn't do anything in the last couple of days. That's going to end. These rates are going to go up up and up from here. Why? Well, let's get to the economic calendar. This just paints a little bit of a picture that we're seeing today. We're seeing right through here, two figures that came in, the GDP, uh, that number was previously was 3.4, supposed to drop a little bit to 2.5, it came in at 1.6, less than half we were where we were previously. Then initial jobless claims. They, they, you know, People continue to say, well, the, the jobs market's gonna start crashing. Well, this, this isn't the, the case right through here. Numbers right now, 212,000 uh, people filed for first time claims Claims previously, you expected to uptick a little bit. It actually went down to 207. Okay, so these were, I'll say, a little bit expected. This the the GDP wasn't, but here's the data that the, that's shaking the markets. Let's go back through this. This is a calendar I use. It's on MBS Live. Fantastic system. If you're a mortgage broker, you got to use this thing. But let's go through their numbers. Okay, we have the jobless claims, which we saw in the previous slide. Continued claims. Now here's where the wheels fall off. We have core PCE. Okay, what is core PCE? Why don't you go over here? The PCE deflator is preferred rates uh, on how the Federal Reserve monitors inflation. So the, the, the true PCE is coming out tomorrow, but we have core PCE prices. Last rating was two. It skyrocketed to 3.7. Okay, that's a huge move in the market. So that's saying uh, prices of things are going up. Now here's the problem. GDP final sales, 3.9. Okay, GDP right now, the how much we produce in this country went from 3.9 to 2. So we're producing less stuff and prices on things are going up. The, the, the lack here is it doesn't really make sense because there's still people hiring. Companies are still manufacturing, but that looks like it's fallen off a cliff, but prices are going up. What, what is that really called? Well, that term is actually called stagflation, and you're going to start hearing a lot about what stagflation is. What is it? Now, basically, the key in how stagflation works is it's found in three economic forces that make up stagflation. Let me put my glasses on so we can go through this. Stagflation, high inflation, and high unemployment. In stagflation, economy slow, slow growth results in high unemployment, which most people seek fewer jobs, lower wages. At the same time we have high inflation. So if you look at this, we have two of these three factors taking place right now. Okay. That's what's shocking in all the market. You see, here's the, here's the Yahoo finance. I go to this because this actually is giving us a lot of data on how companies are doing. So here's the mis, like kind of the misconnect on a lot of these things. Look at uh, IBM stock sinks after earnings. Okay. They, they missed earnings. But if you look at a lot of these things, you can see through here, uh, let's go through American Airlines, raises after boosting Q2 forecasts. Comcast beats revenues. Amazon, so invest billions of dollars. So you can see through here, there's still, you know, most of the companies are blowing out earnings. Okay, so you have a stock, you know, companies that are doing very well, but prices are up. Again, stagflation. So what normally happens during flag sta stagflation? Well, stag in stagflation environment, the Federal Reserve might be forced to raise interest rates. Well, they've already raised interest rates 12 times. So what do they do? That's the conundrum that we have. So we also have the administration right now. They're spending tons of money on unemployment, defense spending, and just giving the money away. Like, I, I know I beat this like a dead horse. The student loan forgiveness drives me nuts because that's only adding to the Federal Reserve's issues. Okay, so what's happening? Well, the, the administration's forgiving billions of dollars in student loans. So otherwise, those people would be paying on loans, which they should be paying on. But no, that money now doesn't have to go to pay those student loans. What are the people going to do? Well, we're not a country of savers, really. So we're going to spend that money. So when you spend money, when you have less production, okay, what's going to happen? Prices are going to go up. That's inflation. So now there's a there's a disconnect between a lot of what the administration's doing 
and what the Federal Reserve's doing, and there's basically a clash taking a pl place right now. So what's going to happen? You guys have to stay tuned every day to figure this out. But right now, the markets aren't liking this. Let's go to uh, the stock markets. You can see right through here. here here's another one. Bristol Myers Squibs beats forecasts. Okay, Comcast beats forecasts. So you're still seeing companies just blowing away forecasts. Well, how does this, the markets are? How are they reacting right now? Well, on this data, the Dow Jones is down 600 points, NASDAQ 300, S&P down 68. Let's see what oil is doing just to because, okay, at least oil is coming down. Let's just check cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are also crashing. So the market in general is just get, getting clobbered right now. Let's get over to what the bond market's doing right through here. Let me get this out of the way so you can see the bond markets uh, that we have right now. Here, let me see if I can get that out of there. And right through here. So this is what we focus in on my channel. What in the heck's going on with the interest rates and more specifically mortgage rates? So what we do is we follow this right here. This is the MBS market. So if you're seeing this thing right here, you might say, okay, that's good. Interest rates are falling. Mm, you haven't watched my channel long enough. So what you're seeing on the screen right now, this is the mortgage backed security. It's a bond that trades on Wall Street. This yield on this thing is the biggest component of your mortgage rate. So we really meticulously watch this chart right here and what the, this bond is doing at this time. What this means is, I, I'll explain this to you in, in, in the simplest terms I can. If the price of the bond is going down, any bond, it could be a corporate bond, a treasury bond, or in this case, we're talking about mortgage-backed securities. If the price is going down, the rate or the yield is going up. A 40 move is a pretty big move. You're going to probably see at least an eighth of a percent increase in rates. So don't be surprised by the end of today, we see rates at seven and a half teetering. Are we going to hit 8% once again? I don't know. We're going to have to monitor this on a daily basis. But basically what's going on in the economy right now is there is so much of a mess out there and the government is is creating a bigger mess. The Federal Reserve is trying to clean up the all the all the spots of all these disconnects. And it's just not it's not good news right now, folks, uh, with a lot of these things. So that's the truth behind it. I'm not, you know, again, a lot of people say, oh, Dan, all you do is focus in on having people buy houses. That's not the case. I want to make sure you guys understand the market that you're in. If you are out there and you're looking to buy a house. Now, I know I'm going from a segment saying, you know, interest rates are terrible. But if you if you want to buy a house, reach out to me. Well, I got to. Because a lot of people are still saying, okay, I, I, I don't care about the rates right now. You know, 7%, 7.5%, you know, as long as you can afford those payments. Okay, if you're still looking to buy a house in this market, you might be looking to re refinance. A lot of people are struggling. And, the, you know, some people are doing, I had uh, several banks in this week, and they're saying, we're doing a lot of refinances of cash out. That's kind of concerning too, because if you're running out of cash in this market, you got some problems. But if you're out there and you're looking to try to buy a house in this market, or maybe your first investment property, because right now the way rates are, they, they are high, um, but there's no, there's, it's, it's going to reduce the competition you have. I did a survey recently on a live event we did yesterday, and I said, how many people are getting outbid multiple times after you've been pre-approved? And it was crazy how many people said, getting outbid, 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 outbid. And it was nuts. So there's still a ton of demand out there for housing, especially in the, the tune of about 300000 and less. So if you're really considering buying your first house, please reach out to us. The best way to do this to start the equation is go to the rate update. That's our website. We have one fantastic uh, addition to our website that we just did. It's a grant finder right through there. It says grant. So if you're out there and you got a, you know, enough income coming in that you can afford the payments, you have great credit, but you're like, I just can't save for the down payment and my closing costs. Well, check out the grant finder. You're going to click there. It's going to ask you, I think a series of about seven or eight questions. You'll get through this in about two minutes. And it's going to tell you, do you qualify for one of the three programs? The highest amount of programs that you can get or the biggest credit you can get back, there is a grant in there for $10,000. doesn't require any payback. It's forgivable right when you walk out of the closing. It's the one of the most attractive pieces of the puzzle we have right now when it comes to home buying. It's right through there. So check that out. Go through it. If you qualify, just click the apply now button and you'll be launched right to my team. If, if that's not, if you go through there and it's like, mm, didn't work, well, you can still apply for a loan to see if you qualify in this market. So hit the apply now button. What's going to happen is you're going to answer a few questions. We're going to set up a consultation with you. Some people like it. Some people don't. What we want to do is make sure all your questions are answered before you put in your application. So if you're in that stage, you don't want to just start kicking the tires. Do you qualify? You know, how do you qualify and so forth? Hit the apply now button. You're going to be launched on your way uh, to my team to help you out. But if you put in an application or you just want to talk to somebody, if you put in an application and you, and you, you see the, on the calendar, on your consultation, it's out for about a week or two, please just call us. 